Welcome to Land House. The channel just hit 19,000 subscribers this week. Very excited about that. So to celebrate this milestone, I'm going to be giving away the Thrunite Neutron 2C flashlight. This is quite a beast of a flashlight here. So if you would like to participate, if you'd like to participate in this giveaway, I'm not just going to be saying, write a comment below. Um, <laughs> I noticed that not many people watch the vlogs and that makes me sad because it's one of my favorite videos to film. And so for this giveaway, I'm going to use this light in a number of scenes throughout this vlog and you have to count them and write a comment below with the number of times I use the light. Hint, this is one time here. So um, anytime you see me using this light throughout the vlog, count that and then at the end, uh, you'll know how many to write in the comments down below to win this light. I think it's a $50 light, which is pretty awesome. So definitely uh, a nice light. So let's get started doing some land of house vlog stuff. Oh yeah, I forgot the disclaimer. If the title of this video no longer says flashlight giveaway, then the giveaway is over. So I uh, just wanted to throw that in there so you're not uh, trying to count flashlight appearances and uh, there's no giveaway. About a year ago, I flew the drone up to this bunch of oak trees over here to show that they are dying out. And let me see if I can zoom in here. So that one right there has almost lost all of its green leaves and will be totally dead uh, definitely by next year. So let's see, this one's dead, this one's dead. The one back there is dead. The one over, yeah, that one. So that whole bunch of trees right there are all oaks and they are dying out. So very sad. And it also poses a hazard to falling on power line and all kinds of not good stuff. Over the past three weeks or so, I noticed a few ants in my car and I'm not a very clean person in my car. I throw wrappers of food and stuff in there, but I think there's a nest of ants in my car. So I've got this knockout fire ant poison, which works really well for other ants. And I have a feeling it's not good to have anywhere where it can be breathed in or touched by a person. So I don't want to put it in my car, but I may sprinkle a little bit where I know the ants are. Um, but I noticed one day that they seem to be coming from, oh, it's dark. Let me use my light here. Um, this little crack right in here is where some of the ants were uh, crawling around pretty heavy and so I'm gonna sprinkle some down in there up oh, check it out here they are so they're right there and they come in from somewhere around here I'm guessing like right here so I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of this knockout in here um, just along the edge of the door in places that I see these little tiny ants so this stuff knocked out an entire colony of ants in the workshop overnight so I know it's really powerful and so I'm just gonna stick with about that much and put it in str some strategic places man I only slept four hours last night getting ready for dog you are dirty come here uh, he might attract some ants or something yeah thank you okay so yeah I'm tired but all right so what should we do here I'm just gonna uh, lightly put it a little bit here and just I don't know if this will do anything or not and then I want to put some just here on the edge where the seal is which might blow away in the when the car moves all right so I'm just gonna toss some into that hole right there let's see what happens missed not too long ago I ran several tests of the U siphon and I had a lot of stuff set out here for that test and it doesn't look very good. Actually, it looks kind of trashy. So I'm going to put all of my pipe pieces into this box and then I'm going to take my water barrels up the hill here to where I'm building my ram pump storage for, uh, for next year. 
Now I am noticing there's a lot of poison ivy down in here, which I'd like to not have. So I need to avoid that and then get this weed eated at some point soon. So I'm just going to take all these components and drop them into this box. And hopefully there's not any unwanted creatures in there. The kid that's driving this four-wheeler up and down the road, he uh, is riding over my grass and putting ruts. So I'm gonna try and catch him and ask him not to do that. I just spoke to the guy and he's probably, I don't know, 13, 14 years old, maybe older. And uh, seemed like a nice kid, but I asked him to, <laughs> I almost felt bad. It's like, you kids get off my grass. But anyway, I think he's going to uh, stick to the road down there. I don't have a lot of nice things, but I just want to keep the few things that I do have. Like the only grass I can get to grow is down there. And I want to uh, keep it rut free as long as possible. Okay, so I pulled the parts and put it in the box. And now I'm going to take these barrels up the hill here and uh, just set them close to where I'm working on the storage. Ugh. That's heavy enough not to do with one hand. I'll meet you up there. So you've probably not seen this project yet because I haven't shown it to you, but I am currently building a water storage system. It's got a somewhat flat base with some paver stones, wood on top of that, and then a unistrut frame, which I am still constructing. So it's gonna have both uh, the metal frame and a wood frame to hopefully make sure everything is super strong. And I'd like to be able to hold three of these 55 gallon drums up here that will be fed by ram pump from the creek. So I have filmed up to this point here, but the summer has been so hot and I've had so many things to do that I really have not worked any more on this in several months. But as the temperature gets more bearable, I'm going to knock this one out and have some more great ram pump content for you as I have a more complete system in the works. At the end of last week's vlog, I mentioned that I was looking into potential riding lawnmowers for this yard, which is just big enough to need a riding mower. Up here, down here, down there, across the road, up both sides of the road and these the sides of this road and I'd probably do something up in here eventually, or at least down in there. And there's also behind the house. So I'm looking at the Husqvarna GT54LS, I believe it is. It's expensive, um, but it's definitely the type of machine that I'm looking for. It can accept a snow plow. It can haul um, stuff like this size right here, no problem. And I'd be able to do um, some basic stuff with it and of course it's a mower um, so anyway let me know what you think about the Husqvarna uh, garden tractors now it's been mentioned several times that I should just go for a full-blown um, small or a compact tractor which um, I would love to have one of those but I can't afford even a half off would be five and six thousand dollars I can't do that so um, but anyway in the meantime North Carolina soil is known for being very rocky and ours is no exception. So I've just uh, started gathering some of the rocks that are in the yard here that would be hazardous to a, a lawnmower. Because next year I wanna have this whole hill planted in real grass. And uh, definitely gonna do, uh, it's gonna be nice, but it's gonna be a lot of work. So I'm just picking up rocks down here and tossing them in my new wheelbarrow. <laughs> did a bit of mowing last week and uh, all of a sudden my mower stopped. I think it overheated and now it won't start. It's the uh, Troy Built 110. So I've got oil and spark plug to change out today. Now I was talking to my brother-in-law and he says that sometimes with these cheaper mowers three years is end of life. So I hope that's not the case. I'd like to get at least one more out of this but um, anyway let's change this spark plug and oil and see if we can revive this mower. Kind of an awkward position. There we go. Some long threads. Okay. Definitely looks used and old, so I'm gonna be giving that a good replacement. 
So I looked online, and this is the NGK7734. I'm hoping that's the correct one. Now, sadly, I do not have a spark plug gap tester. So we're just gonna plug this up and see if it works out. My dad's got one I can borrow if this still doesn't crank. Now it indicates that I was supposed to run the gas out, but since I can't start it, I still have gas in here. So we're gonna just set this aside and attempt to get this thing tipped over to drain. Oh man, that's some crazy dirty oil. Definitely should have been changed sooner than this. Now it really needed to have been warmer when draining this, so the mower would have been run for a while, but I'm just gonna let this sit for a bit and hopefully do its thing. I have some SAE 30 here that I'm gonna put back in. It has different temperature ratings for the oil that is required. Okay, time to see if that worked. Well, that was a no-go on fixing the mower. Apparently, routine maintenance is important. I took the uh, air filter off and sprayed some carb cleaner in there, and it cranked for just a moment and then died again. Put the old spark plug in and repeated that same deal. So if you have some ideas on what to do with a lawnmower that has been severely neglected for the past three years, uh, let me know. Now when I get my newer mower, I do intend on keeping it maintained. I just, uh, I've been lazy and terrible with this one. And so it has died on me, I believe. Um, so, with that in mind, my car is right at 4,000 miles on its oil change, so it's time to go do that. Well, Emma and I are here at my friend's house for one last hoorah. She's got to get these windows cleaned up here at the highest points, and so I have got the ladder set up, and I can use a squeegee if I don't have enough height there, which I probably will need. Are you going to help out, Emma? Are you going to help out? Thank you for helping. That woke me up. <laughs> they just had their floors polished and the ladder started slipping backwards. I don't know if that's uh, 20 foot or what, but it's up there. And now my heart's racing, so I need to find something nice and heavy to stick by that ladder. Uh-oh. Are you okay, baby Emma? What's the matter over there? <laughs> so it was quite scary being up on that ladder. Uh, I waited for my friend to get back before we I uh, got up there because she had just recently had her floors refinished and they were very slippery so uh, being on top of a 20 plus foot ladder with slippery floors was not a good idea. Well Emma and I are here at my parents house where we're going to be changing the oil in my car so I'm going to use my flashlight here to uh, see what's going on. Ah, so I got the plug there and a filter up in there. And I've got my uh, oil catchment pan there. So let's go ahead and get this taken care of. Well, that wasn't very tight. Guess it's all right though. flat. 
Unlike my lawnmower, I try to keep the oil in my car changed out every uh, three to four whoops, ah, thousand miles. Ouch. Oh, this always gets stuck on here. Oh well, just let it drain out. So Wally and Laney have discovered that the deer are up here hanging out in the woods. There's uh, two small ones and a mom but the dogs have such small legs they can't get to the deer and the deer are just sitting there watching like seriously <laughs> and so they're trying to find a better way to get to the deer through the woods look at lady she's like i'm gonna get you you're eating on the property oh he's like i don't know if i care about this as much as i thought i did like, yeah, you're up. And they gave up. It's been several weeks, but I'm still working on my underquilt. And it is much more difficult than I originally thought it would be. So let me show you here some of the baffles that I've been working on. There are 24 baffles total. And you can see down here this uh, little mesh material. And that sews so that there is a gap. Uh, it's kind of hard for you to see maybe but um, so there's a gap in here that so uh, with a lot of traditional like jackets the top layer is sewn to the bottom layer and there's a an air gap that causes coolness uh, but this has these baffles so there's never a time where the top is supposed to touch the bottom when it's got the down in there so anyway uh, what I've been doing is I, I've got to measure the top and the bottom for where the baffles connect and then it gets kind of uh, cramped being in the sewing machine. But anyway, it's coming along and I'm looking forward to when I get to stuff the down in this thing. What do you think, Emma? Is it fun? I just finished my underquilt sewing and I'm here in the bathtub because I'm about to mess with the down, putting it into the under quilt and this stuff is so fluffy apparently it makes a big mess so that's why i am here in the bathtub so i'm about to uh get into this and hopefully it'll be good and uh, when it gets stuck to the side i can just rake it off in one pile and hopefully save it so i've just barely touched the top of this and i've already filled one full side very full so i'm gonna have to shake that towards the middle of the quilt and get it more distributed before I move on. But it's just, uh, I've never worked with this before and it's very incredible how fluffy this stuff really is. So what have I learned about working with down? Well, first thing is, don't try to blow into the bag to push things down. Now that was a mistake. <laughs> Um, the next thing is, it is going to make a mess, and what I should have done is get a vacuum cleaner ready with some kind of uh, cloth or pantyhose over the suction part so that I could have cleaned this up quickly. Um, so what I'm going to try to do is knock off the fluff and go get the vacuum cleaner so I can clean this up a little bit more easily. I may have overstuffed this a little bit, but I think it's gonna be good. Well, it's done. <clears throat> well, it's done. A lot of work, and uh, I think it's paid off. So let me show you what it looks like here. Um, I've been just kind of rearranging the down, but I'm hoping this is gonna be good for about 20 degrees. So we'll see. I still have to do the, uh, the cordage in these channels and get all that suspension stuff done but i like it a lot it looks really good well it's uh 9 30 on wednesday evening which means the day is over and so is this vlog so count those flashlight times and definitely write that comment below and i hope you win also if you know some ad uh, advice on how to get that lawnmower going again i would appreciate it thanks for watching and i will see you in the next vlog Bye.